guys, the next step in doing this is trying to figure out one, where you're gonna put your high tunnel. So I wanted to make sure that I brought this pipe bender close to where my job site is gonna be. You can pretty much use these pipe benders and put them on anything you want. I've seen people put them on, lay them down flat as on a picnic table so they can grab it like this and bend the pipe. I've seen people installed on their decks. Um, I've seen people installed on the side of their barn. I didn't want to do any of those things. What I've got is I've got a plenty of these Chinese elm. Um, so what I can do, I know they are very vigorous, so you can drill into these. I've got one in my driveway right now that's been hit by lightning at least six times, and it is still growing good. So these trees, for whatever reason, they're very good growers. So what we're gonna do is I've decided I've got this one right here, literally 20 feet from where my high tunnel is gonna go. So I am going to mount my tube bender here. And you may ask, well, where did you get your tube bender? Well, you can get your tube benders from bootstrapfarmer.com. This one is a 12 foot bender. I own a four foot, a 12 foot, and a 20 from them. And, uh, and no, uh, they did not give me those pipe benders. I still have to purchase my stuff. Even though I do stuff for them on the side, I still have to purchase my equipment from them. So uh, this by no means is a plug for something uh, as free, but no, I did have to purchase this with my own money. So each one of these benders bends a certain radius. So of course the 12 foot one is going to bend a 12 foot high tunnel, the 20 foot one, just like you see in the DIY tunnel there, it's gonna bend a 20 foot one. And then the four foot one is gonna bend a four foot radius. So, so on and so on, just to get that out there. What you do have to do when you get these is they will come in a box with some bolts. Um, I choose to upgrade my bolts to 9 16th carriage bolts. Um, I just feel I put grade eights in it. You by all means do not need grade eights. I always try to go a little overkill on stuff like this because I want to do it one time and that's it. So I chose to upgrade my bolts, which is no big deal. It does come with bolts to add this to anything that you want to do. I put it on a, a two by eight. So what that does is I can move this from place to place, house to house, farm to farm, whichever is needed. Um, and it also has a good sturdy, a good sturdy base for this to mount to. So all you're gonna do is run your carriage bolts through. You're gonna find a good place that's sturdy, that does not move. So as you pull those poles and bend that, you get a good pull from that. So what we've got is we've got three branches in this tree, but the first, the one in the middle is further, about 12 inches back. So as you can see, if we mount this, kind of like this, that's gonna be the perfect height. You don't have to go 10 foot in the air and you don't want it right here. The reasoning why is because those sticks are 10 foot long. So you've got to remember, once you stick that pole in there, you've got, you've got probably about seven foot of pole sticking out. So you wanna make sure you have ample room from the ground and you don't want it too tall where you cannot reach that pole to bend that. So I always try to shoot for, I just extend my arm out like this just like this, nothing fancy. I'm not even gonna level this dude. I am just going to, um, I, you know what? I may just kick that up just a hair because this is where the end of the pole is gonna rest and this is where I'm gonna be. It'll just make it easier on me. What I've got is 9 16 carriage bolts. Let me go ahead and show you guys that. All we've got is about some four and a half to five inch long carriage bolts. You can go longer than that. There's no need to, this is more than enough. That is just a two by eight. So literally this is probably a little bit of overkill, but this is what I had in hand. So I just got some washers on the backside. Got a ratchet there that I'm gonna ratchet that into the tree. And I've also got a, um, I've also got a three pound sledge. You don't need a three pound sledge, but this is what I keep on my trailer for my high tunnel building. This is what I put my ground posts in with. So I'm just gonna repurpose this for this. Just leave that crook in the tree. I've already drilled a hole in this board here that this is going to go through and you can see it sticks out probably about three inches out the back which is perfect so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go up into this tree here and i'm going to find which is right there and all i'm going to do is just pound that just a little bit to hold it because i'm only one person here so i'm going to use it as a little cheat to help me um, I'm going to come in right about there. So that's probably about an inch out of plumb there or out of just like that. I'm going to step back and take a look at it. As you can see, everything is easy in reach. I can get my hands up here above this. 
I can do any type of work as needed. So what you want to do is you just want to take your ratchet and you want to ratchet this down. To mount this too. I say you're not going to be putting a lot of weight on it. You're just going to be bending that pole. So you're going to take pipes that you've already bent once and you're going to re-bend them. Yes, that is what I'm going to do. What we are going to do is it is okay to re-bend the poles if you're going from a looser radius to a tighter one. And what I mean by that is my poles are already bent on a 20 foot uh, bending radius. So I can tighten that up just a little bit to a 12. You cannot go from a 12 and stretch it out to a 20. It will not work that way. So just remember that same instance as anything else. You can go from big to small, but you can't go from small to big. So just remember that. All right, as you can see, I've got everything put together. Everything's ready to go. I've already bent a couple hoops in the background just to make sure the height of this was going to work for video purposes wise. So what I've got here, as you can see, is a pre-bent piece of hoop. Um, on the 20 foot high tunnel, which we talked about, it takes three 10 foot sticks to bend that arch. It's 30 foot a stick to bend a 20 foot arch. That's where you get your 12 to 14 feet of height, depending on how you jack your sidewalls up. So this is the pre-bent center, as you can see. So all you're going to do is you're going to stick that piece in there. And I usually try to leave probably about, they say nine inches. I usually try to leave probably about six or five or six inches is what I try to do. Um, kind of just somewhere in that range right there. And you could already see, uh, if I step back a little bit, you can always already see the pre-arch. So what you want to do is you want to eyeball this thing. You don't want to bend this like this, or you don't want to bend it like this because what you do is you'll get a, you'll get a quirky bend. So you want to make sure you lay this in to where the arch is meeting in the middle of these two posts like this. And then you're just going to slightly just pull down real easy like this. Just push your weight. You don't have to go crazy. Once you get to the bottom, it'll flex back up. You move about another six to nine inches. Bend it. It'll come back up. Six to nine inches. Bend it. It will come back up. Six to nine inches. Bend it, same concept. As you go further down, it gets a little bit harder, of course, because you're losing your uh, your leverage. So, of course, each one of these benders that you buy comes with like a three foot cheater pipe here with a little bit of weight in it. And what that's for is to stick it in the end here. And it's a cheater pipe. So just go easy with it. One person can literally, I cannot tell you this and stress this enough. This is the third high tunnel I've built and I've literally done all three of these by myself now yes i do have help when we put plastic on um and yes i do have help um when we build the beds and stuff when it comes to putting these kits together you pretty much one person could do it by themselves if you give yourself a week if you had two to six people you could get this done in two days so it's very simple i've almost got this whole high tunnel already i put all the ground posts in today and i've got i'm down to my last couple poles here to show you guys how to rebend these but just remember, this has already been bent once. So just go easy with it when you go to bend this because I've kinked a couple pieces already that I'm going to have to throw away that I can't use because I got too aggressive with it because um, there, there are already holes drilled in this pipe because, you know, it was put together as a tunnel. So as you pull on this and those holes are in there, it does stress this. This is just chain link fence top rail. This is all these DIY kits are done. That's what saves you your money versus an all metal kit like that one over there. That kit over there is about four times more expensive than a DIY kit. Now, I'm not struggling you away from an all metal kit. One of the best investments I ever made. Everything is comes on one crate. You read the instructions, you put it together, you never have to leave your home. It comes with all the nuts, bolts, screws, and everything. But you pay for that convenience and the shipping also getting that to your house because you are shipping something that weighs, I would assume, a couple thousand pounds. So... And that does come on semi truck, so it is a little more expensive to ship. But you know, this is what it is. You can make this and just go easy with it. There's no need to get in a hurry. Like I said, this is pretty easy to do. When you get to the end, I like to give it just a little kick, and it'll fall on the ground like that. And you just pull that out. Now you've got a rebent piece. So I'm going to lay this over here on some flat ground grab our second piece because on this 12 foot tunnel it only takes two 10 foot sticks to rebend the arch to 
a 12 foot versus a 20. So you do have extra pieces. Like I said earlier in the videos, I am going to use those extra pieces to build a third high tunnel uh, next spring. I'm not going to do that this winter. I wanted to get this smaller propagation tunnel built now so I could use it in the spring while I've got a little bit of downtime here going from summer to fall. Um, so once again, you get this set. You can eye down, eyeball down it. Go easy. Just like that. Now it may have a couple little kinks here and there. You are reusing pipe that you've already bent. So don't, there's nothing to fret about those little kinks. You may see a couple little kinks here. Um, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. As long as you're not kinking it in half, you are fine. So you can see I need that cheater bar. Uh, that's just to get a little bit of leverage there. Uh, there you go. Um, and all we're doing is we are going to put a, uh, a tech screw into here. And like I said, I, I've done a whole complete video series. Actually, two complete video series. One on the Bootstrap Farmers website. And then I've done one on our Kansas Garden Guy YouTube channel when I built the DIY. I built this 20 by 100 on the Bootstrap Farmer channel. So once again, if you guys uh, do think of anything or you're needing any kind of materials like this to rebuild a high tunnel, maybe you're thinking about building a DIY. Maybe you're thinking about purchasing a high tunnel. Maybe you're just thinking about purchasing some seed starting equipment from seed starting trays to bottom watering trays, microgreen trays, grow pots, aquaponics, hydroponics, anything like that. Make sure you check out the link below in my description. We are an affiliate for Bootstrap Farmer, so if you're thinking about maybe possibly helping us out on the farm, that's the way we like people to contribute for whatever you use. It doesn't cost you any more to use that affiliate link. We just get a little bit of commission from that, and then we use that money to buy better filming equipment or buy more things on the farm to do some more instructive videos for you guys. Just get that little bit out there. So you want to put a tech screw in. There you go. And so... I can grab both these. Now, if we had two people, this would work out a lot better. But like I said, right now, we don't have two people. My wife is at work, so I'm doing this by myself. So I'm a solo guy. Put one end in. You don't have to get crazy with it. Put it in about a foot or so. Now, the adjustment on this does not matter at this time. As you can see, all these hoops are going to be a little bit out of adjustment. All you have to do is when you put these hoops in your tunnel here, just push real easy. Don't go crazy because you'll bend this hoop. And it's got a splayed effect. So if you see as I pushed in, these stakes are two and a half feet in the ground. I've got two and a half feet out of the ground and two and a half feet in the ground. That's what gives us our rigidity. That's what gives us our, um, our structure. So when we do hit those high 70 to 80, 90 mile an hour winds every once in a while, uh, your tunnel will stay intact. And so, you know, as you put this in and as you need to move this hoop up or down, you see this, I can just pick it up or I can move it down to adjust the height of that hoop. So it looks like I've got one more to bend. So I'm gonna get that last one bent. All right, we have got the last hoop here. Gonna put that in. Like I said, just, it's really easy here. It's kind of laid in the hole really easy. Come back and you can see what I was talking about, about that press fit. That's what gives you your structure. Just like that. So, uh, yeah, so this is a 12 foot wide, 9 foot tall, 36 foot long high tunnel right here. And I've got the landscaping fabric down just like we did the other tunnel on that big tunnel and the DIY tunnel. To be honest, that's the only way to go. I've seen a lot of people do these smaller tunnels and they don't use the landscaping fabric. Um, and as you're doing what I'm using this tunnel for, as we talked about earlier, I'm using this for seed propagation. So I will have a lot of seed starting mix. I will have a lot of transplants in this area right here um, set on tables. And so the last thing you want to do is have just bare grass or anything because any type of seeds that fall on the ground are going to grow. You're going to have to try to mow in here. It's just a big, it's just a big hassle. The best thing to do is to mow this really short, scalp this down, put your landscaping fabric down. That will actually keep all the seeds from germinating, keep the weeds from coming up, and it will give you a good platform to set your tables in and do your watering. Plus water will go through uh, this heavyweight landscaping fabric. But 
Guys, I'm going to cut the video short here. Part two, we're going to pick up. We're going to do baseboards, hip boards, and we're going to do in wall. So I'll talk to you then. Bye.